Hello, good evening and welcome to the German American Heritage Foundation and Museum right here in the heart of Washington, D.C. Tonight, we have a very special performance for you. This year, 2020, is the year of Ludwig van Beethoven. It's this musical genius's 250th anniversary and we want to celebrate this occasion tonight with a tribute concert to the master that celebrates his diversity and the variety of music that he composed. You will be listening to the American virtuosi who will entertain you with selections from Ludwig van Beethoven and we want to especially thank the German Embassy here in Washington DC for their support and collaboration. Thank you very much and I hope you have a very enjoyable evening. Thank you. His works are known all over the globe. The seemingly simple Bagatelle No. 25 in A minor, also known as Für Elise, which we just heard, is one of the most popular piano compositions of all time. His symphonies continue to be played by world-class orchestras and remain audience favourites. 
The work of this giant, whose creations span the transition of the classical period to the Romantic era, is so important that it was selected for NASA's two Voyager probes, demonstrating humanity's greatest achievements. Beethoven's music has also been used to great effect in numerous films, and his Ode to Joy serves as the anthem of the Council of Europe and the European Union. But who was this man whose 250th birthday we are celebrating this year? He was born on the 16th of December 1770 in the German city of Bonn on the Rhine, a residence of the archbishops and prince electors of Cologne. They were important supporters of the arts and the city flourished under their patronage. Young Ludwig was born into a musical family from Brabant. His talent was obvious even at an early age, and his father Johann, a singer at the princely court, became his first teacher at the age of five. Inspired by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's success, Johann unscrupulously promoted his son as a child prodigy and put him through a harsh and intensive regime of musical training that often reduced the boy to tears. At the age of 10, Beethoven began his studies with his most important teacher in Bonn, Christian Neve, who taught him composition and made him his assistant organist at the court chapel. In 1783, he published his first work, a set of keyboard variations, followed by three early piano sonatas known as the Prince Elector Sonatas. In 1785, as a teenager, he found relief from his abusive father with the von Breuning family, whose children he befriended and taught piano. His compositions during that time show a growing range and maturity. In 1790, he received his first commission by the Literary Society in Bonn for one of two emperor sonatas that were not performed at the time and remained lost until the 1880s when Johannes Brahms described them as Beethoven through and through and prophetic of the style which would mark his music as distinct from the classical tradition. That same year, in 1790, he was introduced to the great classical Austrian composer Joseph Haydn, and after a second meeting in 1792, arrangements were made for the 21-year-old to study with Haydn in Vienna. Shortly after Ludwig's arrival, his father died, and in 1794, French troops occupied his birth city, which led to the departure of the Electus court. With only two brothers left who followed him to Vienna, Ludwig decided to make his stay permanent. Fortunately, several Viennese noblemen had already recognised his abilities and offered him financial support, among them Count von Waldstein and Prince Lobkowitz. His first public performance in Vienna was in March 1795, where he first played one of his piano concertos. Shortly thereafter, he arranged for the publication of the first of his compositions, to which he assigned an opus number, the three piano trios, Opus 1. The years between 1795 and 1802 were fruitful ones, and he produced some of his strongest, most emotional and original compositions, including the Sonata Pathétique, his first and second symphonies, his first six string quartets, a ballet, The Creatures of Prometheus, the Moonlight Sonata, dedicated to his love interest, Countess Giulietta Giccardi, and his third piano concerto. However, starting in 1801, Beethoven's hearing began to gradually decline. Following the advice of his doctor, he moved to Heiligenstadt in 1802 to come to terms with his deteriorating condition. Plagued by thoughts of suicide, he wrote a letter to his brothers, the Heiligenstadt Testament, ultimately recording his resolution to live for and through his art, determined to seize fate by the throat, it shall certainly not crush me completely. When he returned to Vienna, he was a changed man, 
and this change was reflected in his musical style, marking his heroic period, characterised by many original works composed on a grand scale. The Eroica Symphony, based on the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte, written in 1803, incorporated this new style. That same year, Archduke Rudolf of Austria, the youngest son of the Emperor, began to study piano and composition with him. They became friends and Beethoven dedicated some 14 works to this important patron. Other works of this period include the 4th through 8th symphonies, the Violin Concerto and Beethoven's only opera, Fidelio, which premiered during the city's French occupation in an almost empty opera house. Nonetheless, in 1810, the writer E.T.R. Hoffmann called him the greatest of what he considered the three romantic composers, that is, ahead of Haydn and Mozart, in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, his music, so wrote Hoffman, sets in motion terror, fear, horror, pain, and awakens the infinite yearning that is the essence of Romanticism. In the spring of 1811, Beethoven's health declined, and he became seriously ill, suffering headaches and high fever. His doctor recommended a cure at the spa of Teplitz in the Czech Republic, while there, in 1812, he wrote a ten-page unsent love letter to his immortal beloved, whose identity was long a subject of debate and who is now believed to have been Antonio Brentano. The defeat of Napoleon inspired Beethoven to compose again and also led to a much-acclaimed revival of Fidelio. In 1818, he wrote the Hammerklavier Sonata, and began work on musical sketches that eventually coalesced into his final Ninth Symphony. He was almost completely deaf by this point, yet he composed a beautiful mass, the Missa Solemnis, for his longtime friend Archduke Rudolf, who had become the Archbishop of Olomouc. The Missa and the Ninth Symphony were both completed in 1823 and premiered in May 1824 at the Kantnatur Theatre. Beethoven was present, but his deafness had progressed so much that he was unable to hear the roaring applause. His health continued to fail, and in December 1826, illness struck again. Beethoven died on the 26th of March 1827 at the age of 56. His funeral procession three days later was attended by an estimated 10,000 people and included Franz Schubert and the violinist Joseph Meiseder as torchbearers. Although he was initially buried in a different cemetery, his remains were moved to Vienna's Zentralfriedhof in 1888, where they were reinterred in a grave adjacent to that of Schubert.
indeed, it is remarkable that in spite of COVID-19, the entire world joined in honoring the genius musician and humanist Ludwig van Beethoven during the 2020 year. We are pleased and honored to join to prepare this special concert under the auspices of the German American Heritage Foundation, sharing some of Beethoven's most inspiring compositions, which have also served as catalysts for promoting human dignity, freedom and justice, as well as manifested his immense will and determination for overcoming even most severe handicaps to serve humanity to the arts. Prior to sharing a selection of Beethoven's great composition, let us share with you some of our personal experience of Beethoven, the man and the great genius. In my nearly 50 years of being a concert artist, and nearly as many as an educator, I had many encounters with Beethoven's music, which made me reflect on the uniqueness of his music. My first encounters came, of course, through listening to recordings and realizing that his music is very different and sometimes can be difficult to understand because it is very abstract. My teachers probably felt the same way because the first time I was assigned a work by Beethoven was when I was a student in the Chopin Academy of Music in Warsaw. During that time, I was selected to participate in the International Pablo Casals competition. The mandatory piece in the second round was Sonata No. 4 in C major by Beethoven. Basically, in the very sophisticated musical environment in which I grew up and was educated, Beethoven was so highly revered that his music was typically only performed by very mature musicians. Performing Beethoven was truly a pinnacle, which not everyone could reach. Yeah, the first work that I learned by Beethoven was his Spring Sonata. So this is uh, Sonata Number no. 5 for violin and piano. Or if you look at the music, actually, piano and violin. Uh, and it is a fantastic example of the emotional content and musical content that you will find in Beethoven, the uh, stark contrasts between beautiful singing melodies with more bombastic surprises of dynamics, suddenly forte and then without warning piano or vice versa. And it was an uh, excellent um, vehicle to help push my playing to the next level. Beethoven can be quoted as once saying that he doesn't care about the difficulties that a certain violinist was experiencing with one of his works. He only cares about the music which he is trying to compose and communicate. And I think often we will find in Beethoven's work certain difficulties uh, because they weren't necessarily conceived as violinistic works, but rather purely musical works. And uh, in addition to that, cer certain awkwardness that can happen because of that, I think the, uh, the sudden surprising nature of his music can take not only the listener by surprise, but sometimes the performer by surprise as well until they really become intimately familiar with the music. As a teen, I studied several of Beethoven's piano sonatas. The first one was Opus 14, number two in G major. And I remember my teacher working through each movement with me with great attention to detail, very specific about the articulations and the dynamics in a way that we really worked through with a thoroughness that was unlike much of the other music I had studied before then. When I was 15 years old, I was invited to give a recital at the Beethoven House in Bonn. And I still remember that performance being in this 
rather humble building that is now, of course, also a museum, but has a small concert hall and sharing the program, of course, with works of Beethoven, but others as well. And then touring the museum, seeing the manuscripts, learning more about his life, about Beethoven, both the, the musician and the composer, but also Beethoven, the person. During my freshman year at Towson University, one of the professors and two guest artists performed with the orchestra as soloists in Beethoven's Triple Concerto, and I was in the orchestra accompanying them. Well, just a year later, when I was 16, I was on the stage as soloist in this same concerto. Um, this work has multiple technical difficulties for the cello and is often nicknamed Beethoven's Cello Concerto. Um, and it, it is crazy that this was the first solo work that I learned by Beethoven, right? Um, I actually still look back on the recordings from these performances with pride. I mean, these days, I spend a lot of my time working with young musicians. I have a passion for teaching and for sharing the music that has been a very huge part of my life with them. And very often, I get a request from one of my students to play Fur Elise. It's a piece that is so familiar to people around the world, to people who don't even follow classical music, and the kids all want to play it. Now, of course, because it's such a familiar piece, I want to make sure that they do it justice. And so we work and work and work on it and eventually get it to a place that I would consider that is a, a decent performance of it. Um, it's hard for, for a kid to, to, to have the attention to detail that it requires. Um, usually that's the first piece by Beethoven that they play and maybe the last one for a little while since most of the other works that he has wrote outside of a couple of bagatelles and, and sonatinas are really quite advanced and take some time and maturity before they can successfully take them on.